What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I'm going to be sorting some of the most popular blade steel compositions into different categories including ultra premium, premium, high end, mid range, good budget, low end and trash. The goal of this video is to help newer people kind of understand what tier of steel they are buying in a very basic way. There's nothing professional or super scientific about this. This is really just based on my observations as a YouTube knife reviewer um, who has a, a lot of uploads. I've handled a lot of stuff. Um, I've experienced a lot of knives in different price ranges and I've got a good idea of which steels are, you know, the bigger chunk of the money you're spending when it comes to more expensive knives or less expensive knives, right? Um, so, uh, you know, newer people, you might not get as much from this. And, you know, certainly there's going to be uh, some disagreement and that's perfectly fine. You can leave your comments down in the description and we can discuss it. And newer people, it's also worth checking that out um, to see what other people have to say. I don't have every single composition ever listed down below. In fact, you can't even see them all down there. Uh, I've got 66 that we're going to be sorting through today. Some of the most common stuff that you're going to see and some stuff that you won't see nearly as often. But there are literally thousands of blade steel compositions, so there's no real way to include everything. If you think I left something out, please feel free to leave a comment down there and let me know and we can talk about it. Thanks so much to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I think the best example that I can give here um, when we talk about um, these blade steels and why I'm going to sort them the way that I am is it's going to come down to how expensive the composition is to create and purchase. Um, like if you're a knife maker, a manufacturer, OEM, and you're trying to purchase this from, um, you know, the places that create this steel, uh, how much of a specialty steel it is and how expensive it is to create a knife out of it. So uh, a good example would be like if you have two knives that both cost a thousand dollars, right? Sometimes RWL 34 is a steel that is not necessarily an ultra premium steel, but you see it in that custom tier. Rex 121 is undoubtedly an ultra premium steel, right? You can make $1,000 knives out of both of these compositions, but on the $1,000 knife that's made with Rex 121, a larger percentage of that $1,000 is going into the steel itself, whereas the RWL 34 blade, a lot more of that money is definitely going to be going into the craftsmanship, the polishing, things like that. But there are certain tiers, in my opinion, that these steels belong in. And I'm going to try and place them and just give you a good idea of where we're at. If there is a little bit of, you know, variance when it comes to some of these steels and why I'm putting them in certain categories, I will say it. I'll try and do my best to explain it. It's hard to remember all this stuff. But anyways, before this gets too long, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Let's start out with uh, something that everybody is familiar with. CPM S30V. And by the way, a lot of these will not have CPM right before them. That doesn't mean that there's a CPM or non-CPM version. Um, it's just to kind of save space there. So this is CPM S30V, and this is definitely what I would consider to be a high-end steel. It's a steel that's been around for a very long time, but it is powder formed. It's definitely one of the better user steels out there, right? It's not necessarily a super duper expensive steel, um, but it's, it's definitely one that I think people would consider high-end. Let's do another uh, steel that uh, uh, people are very familiar with. Let's do M390. Now, I've got a couple of variations of M390 down there. I think you guys can see them. So M390, 20CV, and 204P are actually all essentially the same composition. M390 is bowler, 20CV is crucible, and 204P is carpenter. These are the same steels. And I knew if I left a couple of these out and only used one, people would have questions. These are still premium steels. Absolutely. Um, they uh, have been around for a very, very long time. And, you know, sometimes you'll see steel like 20 CV in the sub $100 territory. But you'll notice that those knives don't have a lot going on for them outside of them just having CPM 20 CV on it. So, Definitely a premium composition, definitely one that emphasizes edge retention and corrosion resistance above toughness, right? Um, and also, I want you guys to understand that edge retention is not necessarily king when it comes to ranking these things under ultra premium, premium, like the higher tiers. They're not sorted by edge retention. Edge retention is just one element. It really just comes down to how expensive the composition is, right? The more detail I go into, the more arguing there's going to be. Let's do VG10. We're going to put VG10. I'm going to put that in mid-range. I think it's a good mid-range uh, blade steel. We do see VG10 sometimes in custom knives, right? But again, refer to that example that I used at the beginning. D2, I'm going to put that... Um, I'm going to put that in good budget. D2 is definitely a much older 
steel, right? There's a CPM version. There is an ingot version. This is the ingot version of D2 uh, for sure. K110 is bowler D2. And a lot of people refer to that as fancy D2. That's just D2. It's just made by bowler, right? There's not really necessarily anything ultra special about it. CTS XHP, a lot of people uh, refer to CTS XHP as stainless D2, and I would agree. I would put CTS XHP in high end. Again, uh, if you're buying a knife, you're considering buying a knife, just understand that essentially everything from low end to ultra premium, those are compositions that I consider good, right? Depending on obviously how much money you're spending and the other, you know, what else is going into the knife, right? The only tier you really want to avoid is trash. And I will definitely give you guys some examples of trash steals. Um, in fact, on that note, I will go ahead and put, um, no, you know what? Not yet. Not just yet. I am going to put 440C in low end. And if, I mean, if you're buying a knife that's like, 30 or 40 bucks, there's nothing wrong with 440C, but that's definitely a low end composition. It's not a super expensive composition. Obviously, geometry, heat treat, all of that plays a huge role. Geometry plays a much bigger role in cutting performance um, over you know all the other elements that could possibly or variables that go into it. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, 440C is still a good steal. It's just not something that I would want to be paying an enormous amount of money for unless there were so many amazing exotic other elements of the knife, right? custom made mirror polishing all of that um, there's better steels but 440c just fine 154 cm i'm going to put that in mid-range as well that's one of my favorite compositions for its balance right uh, a good example of you know i don't want everybody thinking they have to be buying knives up here in the ultra premium premium and high end 154 cm has an incredible balanced composition and it does tend to be slightly more expensive than steels like, what's another good one? 14C28N, which, yeah, do I put it in budget? I mean, we see it in the budget territory, but honestly, I don't know. You know, I think I think I am going to put it in good budget. 154CM does tend to be a more expensive composition despite it performing very similarly to 14C28N along with VG10. Uh, let's do LC200N. This is the same thing as Cronator 30, which I'm not sure is actually up on the screen right now, but we'll get to it. Uh, that is definitely, I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to put that in, in high end. I think some people would put that as premium and that's fine, right? If you were doing this and you would put it as premium, I think that's perfectly fine, right? Uh, LC200N, I'd put that as high end. Um, let's do S45VN, also going to be a high end steel. And I'm going to put um, CPM 154. And this, you know, this is what's tough. A lot of people will probably think that there should be a category between mid-range and high-end because a lot of people would prefer S45VN over CPM 154. And the reason they say that is because S45VN has better edge retention than CPM 154 when it's heat treated properly and has proper geometry. And it's it's just people like automatically kind of default to edge retention is king. So if one steel has better edge retention than another, then it shouldn't be placed in the same category. And I disagree. I think this is about the same category. I mean, I will, if I'm buying a really, really nice knife and it's got a lot of other extra special custom elements, right? I love CPM 154. I think it's one of the most well-rounded users out there. RWL34 is essentially the same thing as 154CM, but I think RWL34 is powder formed. RWL34 is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning. It is a steel that is used a lot in custom knives because it takes an incredible polish. It's also very user friendly for people who are going to use their super special premium knives. It's very easy to touch up. It holds a decent edge. It's, it's reasonably tough, right? It's very stainless. Really, really good stuff. Definitely. Um, S, should we do S110V? I'm going to put in premium, I think. Sorry. Uh, premium, I'm also, I'm going to put that there. Um, Man, what do I want to do? I'm going to do S35VN is going to go in um, high end. You know what? Boy, I kind of am feeling like maybe CPM 154, RWL34, and 154CM. Because these are all, I think I think these belong in mid-range, looking at them again. It's really hard to place a lot of this stuff. I'm going to put CPM D2 in mid-range. It can perform quite a bit better than um, CPM D2. Same with 154CM because of the, I think it's the the carbide formation. It really, like the, 
it, no, actually, it's just different. CPM 154 and 154 CM perform about the same because um, it's it's the 154 CM is already a super fine grain structure, whereas CPM D2 and D2 are, can be quite a bit different because D2 does not have, like the ingot form of D2 does not have a super fine grain structure, but CPM D2 does. Um, and there's a huge benefit there with carbide formation, I believe. Uh, not a metallurgist, just trying to help make sense for new people in the most basic way possible. N690, that's bowler, definitely also a mid-range steel. We see it on knives that are more expensive uh, at base, right? The, the base knives that we see this on, we see them on more expensive knives than, you know, the budget territory, right? The $75 and under mark generally. Um, Crewware. Mm, Crewware is a really, really good steel. I think I'm going to put it in high end. I think that's where that belongs. Um, I'm going to put... So, um, this is something that you just don't see very often. In fact, you hardly see it ever. Uh, and it, it is very expensive. S125V is going to be one of those compositions that is almost specifically created to have an incredible uh, potential edge retention. And again, edge retention is not king. This just ends up being the case here. But this is a very specialized steel that we don't see very often. It's not very tough. It's very difficult to grind, right? Not a lot of makers are willing to work with it. It can be very, very expensive. So we don't see it very often. Um, let's see here. Another composition that is very, very expensive and that we don't see very often. This is actually not steel. Dendritic cobalt. Uh, Teravantium, we see through Terrain 365, and a massive portion of the cost of those knives goes into dendritic cobalt. Now, a lot of people, I think, might put that in premium. I'm going to put it at ultra pre premium, but I think it would be fair to put dendritic cobalt in premium. Another one we're going to talk about, tungsten carbide. Uh, I, I think, technically, that is like the king of edge retention. Um, my expertise on that stuff is not absolute, but we don't see it very often. Uh, there is a, I always forget the, the brand that, um, you know, did this, that, that made that, that blade super duper famous. Um, but uh, tungsten carbide, we don't see it nearly very often. I know a lot of people say you can get tungsten carbide razor blades. Yeah, you can. But think about how expensive those blades can be, right, for just the small amount of material. So you turn a whole knife blade into something like that. Um, and then you give it a geometry that, that it makes it uh, able to, to you know, actually cut and perform. Um, that's going to be super expensive to put on uh, a knife. 15V, I think a lot of people might put it in premium. I'm also going to put 15V under ultra premium um, just because, again, that is super specialized. I think we've seen some 15V Spyderco sprints. Um, but I always, I, I kind of forget about that. Uh, but uh, I, I'm fairly, I'm fairly confident there have been some 15 V Spider Coast prints. Not a composition that we see super often. Let's do a, um, let's do a blade steel that I would stay away from. Actually, there's Chronator 30. Sorry about that. Chronator 30. Let's bring that up and put my, the the thing at the bottom there, that bar. I've I've got it hidden, but if I go down there close enough that pops up. Chronator 30 is going to be in the same area as LC200N. This is also z Finite. It's all the same stuff. See, if I go down here, you guys can see all of my notifications and <laughs> everything like that. So sorry, you might see that every now and then. 420J2 is a perfect example of a trash steel. Uh, every now and then I see somebody try and argue for 420J2. And I think that all, uh, well, I think most arguments for a lot of these steels and their placement is perfectly valid. There, you know, I feel pretty confident about the general zones uh, that I'm putting these in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and say right now, uh, there is no argument for 420J2. That is not a steel that should be a blade. That is an entry level, ultra entry level, nothing. I mean, it's not um, any serious OEM knife maker. They're not making blades out of 420J2. So just understand that you should not be paying a lot of money. I don't care if it's, I mean, if it's some custom makers trying to make some crazy like 40 hour project out of 420J2, in my opinion, they're wasting their time. Uh, that's not a blade steel that I would want. 
um, as a, on a knife. CBM M4, definitely that's going to be the premium category. That's awesome. That's essentially uh, if you took M390 and added incredible toughness but removed a lot of the stainless qualities, that's what CBM M4 is, and it is awesome stuff. Hmm, let's talk about Aw6. Yeah, that's also trash. Um, not uh, not a steel that I would recommend uh, people go after. Uh, here's another one that's trash. 3CR13 MOV. And you know what? I'm also going to put 7CR17 MOV. I think some people would place that in low end, and I would disagree. I think these are steels that you should avoid. Uh, 12C27. Generally speaking, I mean, you could put it low end, good budget. I'll put it in. I'll put it. I'll put it about here. I mean, a lot of these could kind of like the low end and the good budget. Like people are going to argue they could be like you. You could swap them around, and I agree. You totally could, right? Vanax, man, that's one of my favorite compositions ever. Do I put that in premium or ultra premium? I feel like we see a massive jump just for Vanax, and I'm going to go ahead and put some of these ultra premium knives or these blade steels are more ultra premium than the other ones in the category, right? We certainly see Vanax more than we see S125V. And I think there's a good argument that knives, if you make two identical knives and one is S125V and one is Vanax, you're going to see the S125V versions going for more. That's true, but I don't want to make a million different categories. So I'm going to put Vanax up here uh, in the ultra premium. Um, LMAX, I'm going to put, I'm going to put LMAX as high end. Um, LMAX, so here's a great example of when I say like, don't, don't, uh, think of this as a edge retention tier list. LMAX can uh, actually generally has better edge retention than Vanax, but I think Vanax is a more specialized composition and that's why we tend to see it on knives that cost more money. We're not seeing, uh, Vanax come anywhere close to the budget world. Whereas LMAX, there's been a few Chinese companies who have kind of screwed around with LMAX and gotten it down there into the low, like between 100 and 150, All right? But you're not seeing that with Vanax. And I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. 8CR 13 MOV, a lot of people would call that trash. That's Chinese OS 8 to my knowledge. Um, I'm going to put that in low end, but I would definitely prefer some of these other steels over 8CR 13 MOV. Uh, one of the most frustrating companies that's using it right now is Spyderco because they're charging like 75 bucks for their Spyderco knives and 8CR13. And I just, I don't think that it's very good. 9CR18 MOV, I am going to put in good budget. Now, a lot of people might point out there's a ton of number CR number MOV steels that I'm not including. There are, but we don't see them very often. And the idea with this list is to talk about blade steels that we see a lot. AR RPM9, also good budget. You could put that in mid range. This is a proprietary powder form steel that is only available through artisan cutlery and CJRB. It is essentially a powder formed version of nine CR 18 MOV to my knowledge. Again, not a metallurgist, just from, you know, experiencing this stuff and reading about it, but it does, it, it does really, really well. And if, you know, if, again, if you would place that in mid range, I, I wouldn't say that there's a problem with that. I think it's, it's pretty much the only powder form composition that we see in the true budget territory under $75. So absolutely. Um, for 420HC, I'm going to put in good budget. Buck is a great uh, example of a company that does apparently a very good heat treat on 420HC. And a lot of people like it. It's been around for a long time. Uh, 1095, I'm also going to put that in good budget. You see that more often on fixed blades. And I think it's a much more appropriate steel for a fixed blade. Not going to hold an end very well crazy tough, really great for fixed blades and stuff like that. Um, I believe, yeah, AEBL, I think is a steel that's preferred in less expensive combat knives and a lot of people like it, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know a lot about AEBL. I know it's been around for a long time. I don't think it's super popular for folding knives. So you can tell me about AEBL and if you would place it, place it higher or lower. I can tell you right now, if you're going to tell me that it should go in high end, I know enough about it that that's not true. I would disagree with you there. Um, but mid-range, good budget or low end, right? If you kind of think right around there, then there you go. Aus 8, again, about the same as 8CR 13 MOV. That's where I would place it. 440A and 440B, a lot of people will argue that those are decent steels. And I, from my understanding, they are better for knives than steels like 420J2 uh, or AW6 or 3CR13MOV especially. 
um, maybe a hair better. But in this day and age, right, if you're spending more than $25 on a pocket knife, you are already here. You can, there are knives made out of D2 that are reasonably heat treated that will so vastly outperform stuff like this. The only thing you're getting with a lot of these is just, it's stainless, right? And then everything else is just, it's just butter, right? H1, that was Spyderco's salt series stuff. And it is so unbelievably soft. Um, I think there might be an argument to be made um, that you could put that in good budget, but we we still have some H1 knives hanging around in the Spyderco Salt line, and the price on those knives gives people the impression that it is somehow a competitive. St- it's it's really if you're like on a budget and you don't want to pay for a Magna Cut knife, which is or or an LC 200N knife, which in my opinion are vastly superior to H1, um, then I guess go for H1, right? But I, I just I think at best H1 is a good budget steel, but it it's it's edge retention. And again, we're not I'm not focusing on edge retention. We focus on everything as a whole. It is it's got such a poor balance. The corrosion resistance is off the charts, but the potential edge retention is nothing. It's it's just like just a hair above nothing. I am not a fan of H1. I'm gonna put it in good budget, but it. it I think it prices itself out is if it is a composition that is more expensive than some of these or some of these, I think it just prices itself out of uh, anything people should be going after. PM60 is definitely what I would consider to be a premium steel. We don't see a lot of companies using this. In fact, I think it's like Kunwu and that's that's it to my knowledge is, is Kunwu, right? Um, so yeah, A2, I think that's like a very preferred um, fixed blade steel. I think, uh, like that would be a better choice than 1095. I think it's got better edge retention. I don't think it's anything ultra special. Um, so you might see some really expensive knives made out of A2. It wouldn't surprise me if you saw, you know, stuff that's like hundreds of dollars made out of A2. But to my understanding, it's, uh, it's, it's O1. A2 is a more preferred fixed blade steel than O1. We do see some folders made out of this stuff periodically, but to my knowledge and understanding, A2 blades are a little more expensive, maybe a little harder to work with, right? O1 is fine, but A2 is going to be a little better. I think 4116 is also a steel that I would recommend people stay away from. It has a very odd and weak sort of nothing balance. There's You're not really gaining anything that's very special, and I think... It's an incredibly inexpensive steel to work with, and it, it the, the competition at super low price points just makes it look very, very laughable, right? So trash might be a really harsh word to use, right? Some of you, if your favorite knives of all time, like maybe your favorite knife in your collection is made out of some of these steels, you're probably going to be a little offended that I'm putting them in the trash category. And truthfully, you can just ignore this. If you like the knife and it's been working for you, you don't have to listen to me. But everything that's above these steels are just, they're quite a bit, I mean, maybe this tier, no, but like from here up, it's quite a bit more expensive. Uh, M398 is also going to go in ultra premium. That's M390, but with better, even better edge retention when it's properly heat treated. Um, In fact, quite a bit, I think. Uh, And it's, even less tough. M390 is not a tough composition. No matter who you talk to, who tells you, M390 is not, it's not created for toughness. So it's not tough. It can be tough to sharpen, right? Tougher than, you know, something like OS 8 or some of these steels down here. M390 is going to be even harder to sharpen. It's going to hold an edge longer um, and it's going to be even less tough. But it is definitely a specialty steel and we do not see M398. You will not see this stuff in particular on cheap knives and this most of the time in fact this most of the time like from high end up to ultra premium you're just not going to see that stuff if it's heat treated properly right i mean if if you're seeing s35 yen on a knife that's 50 bucks i would question everything about that knife right you just we just don't see it maximate do I put Maximate? I'm going to put Maximate and Ultimate uh, Ultra Premium as well. Uh, Maximate is also one of those crazy, ultra ridiculous edge retention knives. I think 15V outclasses both Maximate and S125. The only... Where is my... Um, I feel like 
some of these I didn't get. Um, or some of them I didn't um, print out. So I'll have to talk about them at the end. Uh, if I don't get to Rex 121, which I, I actually don't, th I think I might have forgot it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this out here. And people who like skip to the end of the video and just got, you know, to see the whole list at once. Uh, Rex 121 would go in ultra premium. I think that's the only composition that's going to outclass all of these in edge retention, which again, I know it keeps getting brought up, but edge retention is not the king when it comes to this cat, this uh, tier listing. Rex 121 is ultra, ultra specific. It is very specially created to have that balance that accentuates edge retention. and But the rest of the cake mix is kind of holding it together so that it doesn't shatter like glass, which it's actually still pretty prone to. It's, it's prone to chipping, right? But Rex 121, if I don't actually get it up here, um, I'll probably have to cut the video and edit it, make a special you know thing and, and put it up there. Um, Magna Cut, I'm also going to put up here. We're just not seeing anything near, like Magna Cut is just never anywhere near, um, you know, something that could be considered a mid-range, like a mid-range mid, mid -range price steal. Um, so we, we always see it up there in the ultra premium. Um, Aus 10, I'm going to put that in low end. Truthfully, Aus 10 performs very similarly to 440C, yeah, to my knowledge. So I'm going to put that. I think that's fine. And a lot of people are going to point out, hey, listen, Complex, VG10 and 154 perform essentially the same as well. Jocking edge retention, I think you're correct. But again, it's the whole cake mix, right? And how much it costs for the companies that make this stuff to produce it and how much it, it costs for the companies who are buying it and turning it into knives. We tend to see 154CM and VG10 on knives that cost more than 440C and OS 10. 10 to, I know. The original AD 20.5, I know. It was a quite a deal there with the OS 10, but anyways. CBM 3V, I'm going to put that in premium. Um, 4V, I, I think it's also, I mean, CBM 3V and CBM 4V, I think are, help me out with this one, guys, who know better. Uh, one of these has higher toughness and lower edge retention. I want to say CPM 4V has better edge retention than CPM 3V and slightly lower toughness. It could be the other way around, but I but I think both of these deserve to be in the premium category. 1075. Uh... I'd put that in low end. I think it makes a great fixed blade steel. I think 1075 actually is a steel we see a lot in swords, maybe? I don't know nearly as much about swords. Spy 27 is definitely a premium steel that we're gonna see in that in, uh, I'm gonna put that in high end because it's essentially the same thing as S45 VN, essentially the same thing. Um, so yeah, uh, Spy 27 is proprietary through the Spyderco company. Uh, and that's that's all you're you're only ever going to see it on Spyderco knives, but it's S45 and it's a great steel, right? Absolutely fantastic. ATS34, that's Hitachi's 154CM, uh, same as RWL30. Is I is RWL34 powder formed? It has to be because it's an ingredient in Damasteel, and Damasteel is powder formed. So it's hard for me. These two, CPM 154 and RWL 34, you could put in high end. You absolutely could. But I think it's probably safest right here. Um, Damasteel, you will always see a huge price increase for Damasteel. Always. Companies now, I mean, it's it's common to see $300. You got two knives. You got, hey, you got M390. You can get the same thing in Damasteel. They'll charge you 300 bucks more for Damasteel. What is it? It is not the same as regular. Like if you go to Amazon, you're like, I can get a Damascus blade for 35 bucks on Amazon. That is not the same thing. That mystery Amazon Damascus could be made from literally anything. Old saw blades and, you know, railroad spikes or something like that. It could be literally anything. Damasteel is very specifically made by the Damasteel company and is RWL34 and PMC27. The combination not only... Uh, yields incredible balance performance similar to CPM 154 because it's RWL 34, but it can also take on amazing and beautiful patterns. It costs a lot of money to create. It also takes on a wonderful finish because it's got an it's got RWL 34 and PMC 27 as the the two you know main components or the main ingredients there. So it is not going to have the same potential edge retention as some of these other steels, but the cost to create it, the cost to purchase it, right? 
it's we own, we don't see budget damage deal. It is not the same thing as an Amazon listing. Blade HQ sometimes mislabels inexpensive Damascus knives as damage steel. It is not the same thing. Damage steel only comes from the damage steel company, period. Uh, Damacor, same thing, also made by the damage steel company. Damacor can have a Vanax core. It can have an RWL 34 core, but this is a jacket of damage steel. That's what goes on the outside. So the, the outside, the cladding, is PMC27 and RWL34. And then the core, the part that pokes out and creates the blade, that can be Vanax. It can be RWL34. I think they actually have another composition that can be, but again, that's even more so. You're going to see, you're never going to see true Damacor anywhere even remotely close to, I would say, I mean, I've never seen Damacor on anything shy of $1,000. Maybe it exists, but not, not very often. Sleipner, Sleipner, I always forget how to pronounce that. I think that is a lion steel composition. Is it? Is it exclusive? Maybe it's not exclusive to lion. Maybe it's more, we just see it on Italian knives. I don't think it's all that impressive. A lot of people, you know, compare it to S30V. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here in high end. But I think if you would place this composition here in mid-range, I think that would also be fair. Rex 45, we're going to put that up there at premium. A lot of people would put it up to. I remember using a Rex 45 Spyderco Shaman to break down cardboard for two hours, and that stuff will not quit. It is ridiculous. I forget where it is on the in the edge retention scale. I believe it's higher than stuff like M390, but lower than stuff like S110V, but I could easily be wrong about it. I don't think it's quite as expensive as some of these compositions up here. But it is de like if you see a Rex 45 Spider Coast Sprint, it's not going to be a cheap knife, right? That's like you Rex 45, like like Spider Coast Sprints with Rex 45 and uh, you know S 110V and 15V. That's like taking a Honda Civic and dropping a like a Dodge Demon motor in it. Like that's you're, you're putting all the money <laughs> into the blade steel, and there's basically nothing else there. So all it's just all performance, right? 52 100. Um, that's not a super special steel. I think it's been sold sometimes as like a pretend special steel. This was like a NASA ball bearing steel for a long time. And I think it was switched out with something else. And I can't remember what it is. Um, was it, I can't remember. I think it's one of the, I was reading about this before I, I did this list. I, I, I believe that was a NASA ball bearing steel and that no, they no longer use that. Um, I think it's a decent budget steel. It's not, you're not going to see it on like super duper inexpensive knives, but it is not an expensive composition. So I'll put it right here. I think it's pretty tough. CTS BD1, we see that in some mid range stuff, but realistically, I think it should be priced lower. I, for some reason, this must be a steel that's like a little more pricey to create, right? Uh, people are saying, if you put that there, you got to put H1 up there. I don't know. I, I, I mean, these are these a lot of this stuff can be interchangeable with the row right below it, right? S60V is a premium steel, but we never see it because the balance of the composition is sort of outclassed by um, stuff like S90V and honestly like M390. And there's, there's just other compositions made by Crucible that sort of make the balance of the S60V composition kind of obsolete but still much better. Like SC, S60V is arguably still much better uh, in terms of the overall balance than a lot of these steels down here. So I know that there's going to be people watching this video who have knives made out of S60 and understand that I, I'm saying S60V is a very premium steel and it's an expensive steel to my knowledge. But the reason we don't see it as often is because there are other compositions that apparently, again, not a professional of anything. It's just I'm a professional reader, professional handler of knives, right? professional guy who uploads YouTube knife content. <laughs> so not a professional of anything. S60V is a steel we don't see very often, but when you do see it, it's expensive, right? S90V also going to put in premium. A lot of people could make arguments for S110V and S90V to go in the ultra premium category. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't put up a big fight there. S90V, I think, is one of the very best premium steels that you can buy. It is amazing to me that some companies are getting S90V properly heat treated and this, the knives are coming out at about $200. Now, they're all Chinese companies. You're not going to see S90V with American companies on titanium. You're just not going to see it, period. 
S90V is an incredible composition, and personally, I prefer it much more than M390, but my gut says we got to put that in the premium category. ZDP 189, also going to put it in the premium category. That stuff is wild, and, and more like we see this stuff so often cladded now. Uh, people will argue about whether or not ZDP 189 is actually a stainless steel, because it, to my knowledge, it has about the appropriate amount of chromium to be considered a stainless steel, but the amount of carbon in it brings that down into a non-stainless category, I guess. So we see it cladded with what I have to assume is probably a super stainless composition. And we see that stuff in really expensive knives. I like ZDP 189. It can be hardened super high, 67, 68, even 69 Giggity Rockwell. Uh, really great stuff. And um, we see it sometimes like uh, Katz, who's been polishing it, like DLC polish ZDP. Uh, definitely a super premium composition. K390 Bowler composition, all gonna, also going to put that in the premium category. Again, that's going to have a great balance of um, edge retention. And I think it's also, I'm not saying it has good toughness, but it might have slightly better toughness than some of these other steels that are boasting really potentially high levels of edge retention. We do see kind of a trend as you go from trash to ultra premium. You do sort of see kind of an upward trend of potential edge retention, right? But a lot of it is balancing the the composition, right? Because a lot, like for example, a lot of these steels are not made for pocket knives originally. Like their primary application, S90V and S110V, I think were designed for industrial food prep. So they were designed specifically to handle, to like have the maximum output. Edge retention is going to be key there, but also you have to have enough toughness, not, not incredible toughness, right? Enough there to keep doing the job that they're meant to do. Whereas S30V was specifically designed for pocket knives. Same with S35VN, S45VN, SPY27. That's all pocket knife steel. I really didn't have a CPM Rex 121 um, picture here. And that just is so stupid. Uh, if you're making it to the end of the video, again, Rex 121, I believe, is the king of edge retention, except when put up against something like tungsten carbide. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Rex 121 is like a mythical steel. A lot of people, you know, they talk about whether or not it's even real, right? <laughs> it's, it's like playing as Luigi in Mario 64. People are arguing, like, is, is that even real or is that a mythical? No, it's, it's real. We just don't see it very often. In fact, we don't see it hardly ever. But it would be in the ultra premium category. This is my, I feel pretty good about this. Uh, if you're new, I hope that this was helpful. Um, I, uh, if you guys have questions, let me know. Again, uh, the comment section is going to have a lot of community discussion. I mean, you can't do a tier list like this or a ranking list like this um, without having a lot of discussion surrounding it. I think that's perfectly welcome. A lot of what I've done here is very, uh, like, especially like with the categories that are right up next to each other, a lot, there's going to be a lot of debate there. And I think that's perfectly okay. So if you want some more information, some people in the comments are going to have a little bit more information there, why they would place certain things in different categories. And I think that's fine. If I disagree with you, I'll let you know, right? Don't come, don't come down there and tell me that 3CR 13 MOV is actually a really great composition. I should put it in premium because I'm going to say no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 that's wrong. Right. But Sure, if you have, uh, you know, if you would place things differently, you just let me know. That's perfectly fine. But uh, I hope that this helps some people uh, kind of understand. Um, I think this has gone on. We're, we're about 40 minutes out. This has gone on as long as I think it needs to be. But um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, please, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.